true, false, true, false, true, false. False. Are the people in your dental office telling the truth or telling something that may, might not be the truth? Tune in. This is going to be an incredible episode. I am Dr. David Maddo. I'm Dr. Richard Maddo, And welcome once again to the Dental Practice Fixers. And thanks so much, everybody, for your loyal support. We'd love to hear that so many people are listening, so many people are watching, and we'd love getting your questions and your comments. So please keep it up. Because after all, we're the dental practice fixers. We, eh? are, the, we are the fixers. Eh? All right. Well, let's just get right to our question. This was sent in from a doctor who, um, oh, thank you, who, uh, who asks to be anonymous. I'm just going to read it right off the email here. It says, I love the beginning to this. It says, good morning, doctors Matto. Doctors. Well, I, I, have Doctors. Some, I have some friends. They're a um, husband and wife. They're both mm. physicians. Mm. And I won't say their name, but let's just say their name was, was <laughs> Dr. Taylor and Dr. Taylor. Let's just say it okay. was. <laughs> they, they kind of insist on being called Doctors Taylor. Like if you... It, if Wackos. You, let's say they're acquaintances, not really good friends. Like yeah. if you introduce them, oh. they'll say like, we, we like to be introduced as Doctors Taylor. Or as I call them, the Doctors Taylor. At what point do they say, like, you're introduced, but do they, do they like, butt in and say, excuse me, no, I, we'd like to be introduced I, I as just, Dr. Taylor? I think they just let it be known amongst amongst people that that's the way they prefer to be introduced. I would do everything I could not to introduce them that way then. Okay, but I, I kind of like this doctor's matter, so I'm going with it. Yeah, but forget Dr. Taylor. I'm not well, I'll tell you what like I think, I, and I've seen this done before, and it's very sexist. Um, I've seen people, like, when their couple's physician introduces, like, Dr. Taylor and Mrs. Dr. Taylor. Now, I don't think that's cool. I think that's you Dr. Know, Taylor and Mrs. Mrs. Dr. In other words, Taylor. In other words, well, this the the woman is a doctor as well, but she's also a woman, so we're going to call her. No, that's not right. You can't I know. Do, no, you can't do. That's I, not right. So that's why they like. Dr. But Dr. Taylor. Taylor's a little weird. The doctor's Taylor. This is doctor. I'd like you to meet Doctor and Doctor Taylor. No, it's that's the different. doctor's Taylor. How about, just, <laughs> how about just like Jim and Marie Taylor? I mean, why do they? What's the big deal about the doctor thing? That's another problem. Yeah, it's okay. a, I think it's a huge problem, honestly. Uh, reservation for Dr. and Mrs. Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> huge problem. Okay, but so we'll tackle that on another right. show. Okay, maybe, maybe. that's a, be good. Maybe yeah. someone can ask us a question about that. About yeah. um, the whole the whole dentist physician being called doctor introduction BS thing that yeah. we've all probably thought about over the years. Dr. Okay, Taylor. Good morning, doctors, Matto. I like it in this instance. I think it makes in sense. In this context. Good morning, doctors, Matto. I'd ask for confidentiality regarding the topic below. Love your podcast. Why, why is that Thank confidential? You. Thank, <laughs> right? you. Thank you very much. Love your podcast. Keep it up. The information is insightful and entertaining. I have what most dentists would consider would consider to be a thriving, profitable practice with a loyal, hardworking team. It is, of course, not perfect. One well, of the, nobody's perfect. I've heard, I've heard. One of the challenges I've run into is I have a team member who is a habitual liar. This particular team member is so comfortable with lying that in my mind, I question everything she tells me. She's also wrong a lot. Wow. <laughs> Wait, she's a liar who's also wrong. <laughs> I'm not a sure liar how, how that wrong. works. Right? <laughs> On the upside... She works efficiently, patients like her, and she is an important contributor to the day-to-day -day operations and profitability of our practice. Have you ever encountered an employee like this? Would you fire someone like this? This person is also in denial about being a habitual liar and would refuse to accept it, parentheses, being a habitual liar, as fact. Well, of course, if you ask somebody, if you ask a liar if they're a liar... They're gonna they're gonna lie. What do you Thanks in advance for any input or comments you provide. Again, please keep my name out of this. Thank you. <laughs> Great question. It reminds me of one of those riddles like um you encounter two people. One always lies, yeah. one always tells yeah. the truth. What's the one question you can ask either one so you can determine which one is the liar? Well, the liar is always gonna be the liar. Right. What is the one question? I think it's a it might be a little more I've always heard that riddle, like there, I can't remember there, the like, there are a fork in the road and you ask the liar which way to go and you ask the, the, the truth teller which way to go. And, and there's a question you can ask them that you will know. We don't, uh, we don't have to figure it out. Okay. But, but, we'll yeah, get back to yeah, that Yeah, we'll one. get back to that one. Well, I'll put that to the side right this second. Okay. Well, you know, it's it's really tough. And I think, I guess, 
Um, it's tough with a habitual liar who's in denial, which they all would be. As you said, no habitual liar is going to say, yes, I'm a habitual liar. Yeah. So confronting them about it is practically impossible because unless they admit there's a problem, how do you confront them? If you say, well, look, if you don't stop lying, you're going to lose your job and say, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. I'm not I don't lying. lie. I'm not a liar. Unless you're catching them in provable lies, which it seems like with a habitual liar that would happen time and time again. This is a, it's a, yeah, it's a really weird one. And, and, I think that when you when you look at the question, there's there's only one answer. I mean, there, there can only be one answer. This person and it rhymes with it rhymes with liar. Yeah, seriously, fire, fire. I mean, the liar. Is there any other choice? No, there's not. I don't care how much this person contributes to the operations and or to the success of the office or if the patients love her or him. Um, if you're a liar, okay, I don't know about you. I, I do know about you. We're the same type of person. We, Thank you. I <laughs> by guess. The way, I by don't... the way, you look great today. You're a liar. I'm a liar. <laughs> no, um, all kidding aside, you don't. You look great. Um, I don't deal with liars. I just don't. Liars are not a part of my life. If I if there's a liar that tries to get into my life, I, I just don't deal with it. I, I, life is too short, and there are too many good people to be associating with liars. And li being associated with a liar is horrible because if they're Telling the truth, you even have doubts. You don't know. Well, that's the thing. That's like, for example, when this liar says, "Oh, um, our, our ten o'clock patient canceled at nine fifty-five. <laughs> How do you know if they're telling the truth, or if they, you know, some fakakta bullshit story happened where there never was a patient in there, or they did something so they could take some time off, or if they say, um, you know." Even worse, I don't know why the, the office account's not balancing where there's $300 that we can't account for. Anything, anything, you know, how can you know when, when something goes wrong and they're telling you why, how do you know that they're telling the truth? And I'll tell you, take it a little further. I remember when I had my practice, um, at the very, very beginning, I made it clear because um, somebody, might, we had an emergency patient come in after hours. They paid in cash and they even made a comment. I'm going to pay in cash. I'll bet Dr. Maddow would like this. And my office manager went to hand me, you know, 200 bucks cash. And I said, no, 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 no. You've got to put that in the register. We have to pay taxes good, on good that. One. Yeah. Believe me, I would have loved to have pocketed course, that 200 bucks. Of course, it would not course. But you got to think, well, if, if you're going to do that. Then what else would you do? Then would you, because that's cheating on your taxes. You know, it's, it is. Yeah. You know, what else are you going to do to cheat on your taxes? And if, if then if they know that you're going to do that, well, what else would you do? What else would they do if they know exactly. you're willing to lie and to cheat? So exactly. even though it's a really minor thing, it's just like ah, somebody stole a, a you know ream of paper, BFD. But you know what? If somebody steals a ream of paper. How do you know they're not going to embezzle 50 bucks, which leads to 100, which leads mm -hmm. to 1,000, which leads to more? you got to be honest about stuff. I don't know if I ever told you this story. I had I, when, in, Back in my practice, I had a really weird situation where, where I had no choice. There was, as far as I was concerned, there was only one decision, only one choice. And so what it was, I, um, it was after hours, a team member of mine came up to me, and she was telling me that um, the reason she didn't come in last week was because she was sick. Now— I knew, I heard for sure. It was like 100%. I mean, it wasn't just a thought, but it, she, she had gone to the ocean. She went to Ocean City last mm. week. But, but she came in and she said she was sick. She was sick. So I, didn't want, I don't want to mention her name, but I said, so Randy, um, no. so, I said, so you're telling me that's, that's, your, that's your answer. You're telling me right now you, you were sick and that's the reason you didn't come in. She said, yes. And I said, well, I've got, so I, I was sitting down with her. I said, Randy, um, I've got no choice right now but to fire you. And she said, well, what do you mean? I said, because you just you just lied to me. And in this office, we do not accept – lying is not acceptable in, on any level. She fired her on the spot? So I, said, I had to. And, and she didn't deny – and she said, you know, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I did lie to What me. if she was sick in Ocean City? Did you give her the chance to <laughs> – <laughs> <laughs> but th my point is, I was not ready to accept even lying on a very small level. Because right. if well, okay, so let's let's bring that back to the dental. Well, that was dental practice, but yeah. another. And for example, and um, a patient's crown is something goes wrong, and you know the dental. Well, what should we tell the patient? Should we blame it on the lab? Should we create some excuse? No, tell, tell the, the truth. The truth. Because again, if you're going to do little lies, you're going to do big lies. And it's always better to tell the truth. You never have to cover your tracks. You know, you never have to remember, oh, did I tell this person this or did I tell that person that? And the truth it will set you free, as they say. It's, right. it's really the way it is. And I love that example, too. Um, if you... And by the way, you know, I didn't I didn't fire her. She, she fired herself, right? Exactly. Uh, self and matter. That's what he used to say. So, <laughs> But it's true. Yeah. So if a dental assistant had some incredible opportunity. They get a free weekend in Ocean City. They know they don't really have any days off left or they're going to put the office in a bind. Just 
ask Tell permission. Ask if you can do it. Some, you know, your boss might say, you know what? Go have a good time. Exactly right. We'll work it out. But don't lie about it because you're going to get caught. Maybe not that one time, but you're going to get caught eventually. Yeah. So I think th as good of a question as this is, there's there's, on there's only one answer, doctor. You have, in our opinion, you have to just. Terminate but it's the, the person. same conundrum that Dennis seemed to have. Well, I know I should fire her, but the patients but, love her. But, yeah. She's a great assistant. She shows up every morning ready to work. How can you believe any – when something goes wrong and this person's telling you some story, how can you right. believe them? You but, can't. Okay, but here's, here's a little um, – Addition to that, to that an addendum, conundrum. would you say? I, I, well, here's what here's what I'm. It's like it's kind of like a situation. Okay. So because we've heard this in so many so many markets and so many towns and cities. Suppose the doc said, "Yeah, I know I should fire her, but in my area, it's impossible to find new employees. It's, it's team members are like it's it's almost impossible. She's been with me, and she although she lies, you know, I, I'm afraid of the, of the other side because I'm not going to find anybody. What do I do? I'm, too bad. Yeah, still, you got to get yep. you got to get rid. You got to suck it up. If that means everybody works harder until you find someone else, yeah. if it means you hire somebody who, and it's a pain in the ass. Somebody with no experience is going to need some intensive training. You know that's just going to be difficult. It doesn't matter. Everyone's yep. got to be honest. Yep. Doctor included, and here, you know there's another thing too. A good point. Let's just say that's well, a really good right. point. And let's just say well, you know, I'm, I, yeah, I take a little cash from time to time, or um, I'll wave a copay when i know legally i'm not allowed to or we'll you know we'll bump up a procedure a little bit on the insurance claim you know all those things are fraud and you know you might look at it as not a big deal but here's another thing you get for some reason a pissed off team member one day mm. you're in big trouble as a matter of fact a dentist i used to work for um this was a lie he let an un a dental assistant take x-rays who was not x-ray certified mm. She was good at taking x-rays. I bet she was. Nobody cared. He didn't mind. The patients didn't know any better. But then, as soon as he did something that she didn't like, she turned him in. And the guy got mm. his license suspended and wow. wound up retiring because of it. So, also, I mean, not to, you know, the opposite of kind of preaching morality, which we're not really doing. Don't give somebody the opportunity to have something on you, to have something yeah. over you. That's bad, too. I've learned. It's just, you know. And I've made all the mistakes in the book, and you've made some. But I've made, I made some. Made, you've made, made them all. Made so many made over all. the years. Yes. Let's face it, human being. I've made a lot of mistakes, but I realized that, you know, I, I'd like to be able to put my head on the pillow at night and not have any worries that somebody's coming after me for something I did wrong, or something I screwed up, or something I lied about, or something I did illegally. I, I just, you know, I, I'm going to be totally above board and not and and put my head on the pillow and not worry about anything coming at me. And and when you're honest, when you do things by the book and honestly, you know. It's no not, worries, man. Right, exactly. So when somebody asks you, what is the best dental podcast? Tell the truth. Tell them it's the dental practice fixers. Oh, there's is zero really question, a choice? There's zero question about that. Cool. No, nobody's even close. We're second to yeah. none, <laughs> as they say. Great question. Thanks so much. And, and it takes guts to send in a question like that. So thanks mm. so much for doing that. I think it's pretty clear what you need to do. Do it. Report back to us, please. And let's get on to the call of... The week. Yes, definitely. Before we do, real quickly, last week, I think we had a few more offices contact us and thank us for hooking them up with Fat Merchant. Fat Merchant's mm, yeah. unbelievable. And this is the truth. You will save money every week. There's nothing to be deceptive or dishonest about. When you use Fat Merchant to process your credit cards, you're doing it the new way. You're paying a flat monthly fee, not an overage percentage, and you will save money every month. So, uh, without further ado, I won't go into more detail because you've probably heard it from us before, but you're going to hear it again. It's a no-brainer. One quick click or call. You're set up. You got the free terminal. You will begin saving money immediately. It's completely seamless. Your patients won't know, and you'll be loving every second. So, Fat Merchant. It's B-I-T dot L-Y slash Fat Mad, which is spelled with two T's. F-A-T-T-M-A-D. So one more time, no www's or https or urls or orgs or bizs. It's just no bmfs. Nothing like that. It's bit.ly slash f a t t m a d. Or if you prefer telephone, we've got a dedicated line just for dentists: 844-860-9951. So give Fat Merchant a call: 844-860-9951. 
Start saving money right away. I thought you were about to give like the time, like uh, 844-1212. That was the old days. Who remembers that? That was the old days. I do. Call the time, call the weather. <laughs> WE6. W- one, any other four numbers, yeah. one, two, one, two. Except yeah. you couldn't use, there's four numbers you couldn't use, I think, but I can't remember what they were. Zero, 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 zero. I don't know. I don't know. Cool we'll question. probably never know. Yeah, maybe not. Things have changed. But, Rich, yeah. we just, fi- literally, literally, like the other day, we finished a no lie. very successful master class. Oh, it was fantastic. Was unbelievable. Now, we, we let in like three more people than we probably, we like to keep them super small. Yeah. We like to keep them between, between 10 and 12 people, 10 and 12 docs. This is a day of learning of, I was going to say fun, because we're all hanging out together, yeah. Rich and me, our coaches, our team. But not only that, we figure out, we talk, we brainstorm, and we figure out how to get your practice to that next level, that level where you've you've tried, but you just can't get there. And we this is a day of, of helping. It so, is a day of exploration. I mean, we learned so much. Exploration is a good word it's, for yeah. it, too. Camaraderie. A lot of great things go on there. So we've got another one. We've got another one set up, ready to go. The best way to find our current schedule, because we do roughly one a month or once every once every couple months, normally in Baltimore, Maryland. It's a beautiful facility, the Matto Center for Dental Practice Success. Check out our schedule, masterclass.matto.com. Dot com right on the site please we want to see you at the very next master class no charge there's it, we waive tuition for doctors because we really want to get you in help you and it's just it's a it's a great day so please masterclass.mado.com see you there how about the call let's, of the week let's, let's do it let's do it this is tara how may i help you hi tara um we're new in town my wife and i just moved here like last month from florida and we're we're going to be looking for a dentist. But in the meantime, uh, before we moved here, we were told that uh, my wife was told she needs some periodontal surgery. Is, is, there, a, is there a good periodontist you, you all recommend? Um, let me double check the name. Sure. As some recent uh, changes, so give me one second. Oh, no problem. Take your time. Alrighty, so um, we usually refer to Dr. Dr. Yep, his name is Okay. He's in which is not too far from here. Um, the phone number is Okay, and he's good? Yes, he's really okay, good. Great. He's the main one that we refer to. Oh, great, great. Thank you so much then. <laughs> no problem appreciate at all. appreciate that. Have okay, bye. All right, bye. Bye. Right, well, first of all, I want to know what part of Florida you're from with that southern accent. I mean, you didn't sound like you're from Miami or Boca or Orlando, Lauderdale, yeah, Boca would be more like, excuse me, we just moved right, into right. the town. So well, why does Boca have a New York accent? It's, just, well, it's, it's, it's obvious works, why it right? does. <laughs> uh, pan, maybe Panhandle? Maybe? Yeah, I was, I was thinking that too. Maybe like the Destin area. Could be the Destin area. The Redneck area. Riviera. It could be that area. Panama yeah. City. I just, I just had a little southern accent. What's yeah. wrong with that? I kind of liked it. I, How do you think she did? Well... Okay, I always like to start with the positive, kind of like Dr. Tuis, the instructor in dental school. When he was like in preclinical and he came over to look at your prep on the ivory tooth, he would always say something nice no matter what. Rich, you look really good today. Exactly. Your prep sucks, but right. you look great. Exactly, exactly. You kind of talk like that, didn't exactly. you? Exactly. I'll, I'll say she was very friendly. I would even use the word sweet to describe her. She was her. sweet. She Loved was her demeanor. Um, just friendly, welcoming, liked all that. Yeah. Now but, there's a but, right? Well, Several. She, well, yeah, well, yeah. On the first level, she yeah. totally screwed up the call because here, it's 100%. Like husband and wife obviously, admittedly, said we're new in town. They, he didn't say we're looking for a dentist right now, but he said we're going to be we're going to need a dentist. But 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 right before that, my wife has been told she needs some peri surgery. So, so she takes a possibility of getting two new patients right in to say okay, to give a, a referral, but she they've never seen my wife. They've never yep. seen the girl, the woman. They don't know if she needs peri surgery or not. And and just referring him over to, yep. to, a, to a doctor, by the way, who who happened to retire a year ago. Perfect. So you know this I happen, guy. I happen to know the person personally, I, uh, uh, and he retired a year ago. You know, may, a, a better strategy would have been, um, that sounds fantastic. Why don't we make appointments for both of you? Come in as new patients, and yes. then we can examine your wife and recommend the right periodontist for her. Even and if, if she yeah. needs a, and she may not even need some. And, also, and add to that yeah. even something like we do a lot of periodontal yeah. therapy here in this right. office. And, yep. we, and we do, we have some things that we can sometimes even avoid surgery. Yep. So many ways but to get that person in. So many. And even at the very least, even if she did this wrong move of mentioning a periodontist by name, get their contact info. Right. Jeez. Right. And then, and how about the guy? He doesn't need periosurgery. Let's get him in as a new patient. 
exactly missed right. opportunity. Exactly. But, you, but you know, yeah, but you know, so okay, so totally screw that up on one level. Yeah. But there's another level too. I want to point out that you know they never really had. Um, okay, most dental offices don't have a team meeting, and they say, okay, listen, just in case somebody calls and they say they're new in the area, and but they need a referral, uh, here's what you right. do. Because it so, never happens. Right. So right. it's right. It never happens. Right. So so the point is. We have to all think on our think on our feet. I mean, there are things that are going to come up all day, every day, and you have to make quick decisions and do it the smart way and say, well, right. here's the best decision f for the office, for our office. The best decision for the office is not referring out to some right. periodontist she's never that. even met. It's the best decision for the patient, too. Absolutely. I mean, they might have – this. the wife might have seen a dentist in Panama City, Florida. Right. Who refers out scaling and root planing, or who, who said may, maybe you're going to need perio? Right, who doesn't have a perio like pro? Right, exactly. Who knows what they are? And so, yeah, exactly right. So let's get them in as new patients, and if you feel referrals the right way to do it, do it based on your examinate. I think it's kind of irresponsible to be throwing out specialist names like that without even I don't know, totally actually, irresponsible. Don't, don't like I the agree. whole thing. And then the patient goes to Kaiser, who by the way is retired. Um, he and goes. Then, the patient goes to beep. <laughs> right, and then. <laughs> Kaiser sends a thank you note to the doctor who referred the doctors because they, well, I never, I don't even know who this right. person is. I never referred. Yeah. No. Madge, what's going on? Tara, what's going on? Why'd you refer? It's a, it's a whole disaster. thing's bad. I, disaster. I hate to say it, but I think it's going to have to be a failure. F, 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 F. Sorry about that. You seem like a very nice woman. Maybe this will help. That's our, you know, and that's the whole idea between, between, behind these secret shopper calls. Yeah, we learn. Yeah, they're fun. Sometimes they're goofy. A lot of times we give people Fs. But it's to help you get better at doing this, and, and we hope this helped. I'd love to do another call, similar call. I'm just thinking, I don't know if you agree or not with this, but I'm, think, I'm thinking I'm thinking 90, 95 plus percent of the offices in this country we call with a very similar type question. It might be, I need to see an oral, I need a tooth taken out, something like that. I think they're going to mess it up. Which is really I agree. A shame. Might really be I need ashamed. an oral pathologist. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Said no one ever. Right. The fly. Okay. Hey. Thanks so much for listening. We will talk to you next week. Listening or watching, depending if you're on the audio or the video portion of this. We are the Dental Practice Fixers. I'm Dr. Richard Maddow. Dr. David Maddow. We will see you next time. Bye.